Hi everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how you can use Passport with Sparrow Wallet in a single signature fashion. Sparrow is a feature rich but simple to use desktop software that is available on Windows, Mac and Linux and can be downloaded from sparrowwallet.com. At the end of this video you'll know how to connect Passport with Sparrow, receive a transaction via Sparrow directly to your Passport cold storage and then how to spend Bitcoin from your Passport with the help of Sparrow. In this setup, Sparrow monitors the addresses controlled by your passport, and this enables Sparrow to show you your total Bitcoin balance. Sparrow will also construct spend transactions for passport to authorize. As always, your all important private keys remain firmly on passport, your secure offline device. This video assumes that you've already got passport initiated and set up. So if you haven't done that yet, head back to our setup guide to check out how you can do that. So once you have Sparrow downloaded and installed, the first step is to click File, New Wallet. Then Sparrow is going to ask for you to give the wallet a name. So I'm just going to call it Passport. Then I'm going to click Create Wallet. Then Sparrow surfaces the wallet setup screen where we can configure some finer details. So starting from the top, we can choose whether this is going to be a single signature or a multi-signature wallet. Of course, for this video, we're going to be using single signature where we need only Passport to sign off on transactions. Then we can change the script type. So you can see there's four different types there. The default and the one that we're going to use today is native SegWit. The next step is to choose air gapped hardware wallet. And then from the list under Passport, I'm going to choose scan, which is going to open the webcam on my laptop. So then over on Passport, I'm going to choose Manage Account, Connect Wallet. Then I'm going to scroll down to Sparrow. Once again, I'm using Single Signature. And I'm going to opt to connect via QR codes. Next, Passport is going to show some animated QR codes for Sparrow to read, which contains the information required for Sparrow to monitor our Bitcoin addresses controlled by Passport. Okay, so Sparrow's read the relevant information from Passport. So we've got the label, which of course is just the name of the device, Passport. We've got the master fingerprint, which is a short identifier for the wallet configuration of your Passport. The derivation path, and then the extended public key. You don't need to alter any of this, it's just worth knowing what they all are. Once you're happy with that, you can press apply. And then Sparrow is gonna ask if we would like to apply a password to this wallet. Now this password is completely independent of Passport itself and it's only to secure access to the wallet file on your computer. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to leave that blank. So there's one final step to check that the connection was successful. And for that, we need to head to the Receive tab. And as you can see on Passport, it wants to verify that the wallet was connected successfully. So on Passport, I'm going to scan the address shown by Sparrow. Passport is going to search its own address list to confirm that Sparrow is actually showing an address that Passport controls. And there we go, we've got a tick on Passport, it shows the address that is also being displayed by Sparrow, and it's confirmed it is a receive address that is controlled by Passport. There we go, connection complete. Receiving Bitcoin via Sparrow into your Passport is super simple. All you need to do is click on the Receive tab and share the address or the QR code being displayed with whoever it is that wants to pay you or send you Bitcoin. Each time that the displayed address is used and Sparrow detects that there has been a transaction sent to that address, Sparrow will automatically surface a brand new address that is also controlled by your passport. So I'm going to go ahead and send a quick transaction into this address controlled by my passport and once that's confirmed, We'll come back and I'll show you how to make a spend transaction. Okay, so I've moved up to the transactions tab 
Uh, clearly, this is a wallet that has been uh, used uh, quite a bit before, but if this is a brand new wallet and you've just received just a single transaction, then that will be listed here as part of the transaction list. So to make a spend transaction, there's two ways to do it. I'll show you the simple one first. Uh, obviously, we're going to click send. Uh, and then in the first box, Sparrow is going to ask us which address we would like to send to. So we can either scan that if we've got an, a QR code on our phone or something that we need to share with Sparrow, or we can paste into that box the Bitcoin address that we'd like to spend to. Next, Sparrow is going to ask you to give this transaction a label. Uh, labeling your transactions is, is always good practice so that you can uh, look back throughout your transaction history and remember what each transaction is for, which can help for various different accounting purposes and also be beneficial to your privacy as well. So I'm just gonna call this one test. Then Sparrow is going to ask how much you would like to send. So that could be any amount up to the total value of your Bitcoin account that we've paired. Um, so I'm just going to put 50,000 sats in there for now. And the next step is to adjust the fee rate. Obviously, you would adjust this up if you wanted your transaction to be processed much quicker. Uh, but as this is a demonstration, I'm going to use the, the lowest possible fee, which is one sat per byte. Sparrow will then give you a total cost for the transaction in Satoshi's and then a brief visual summary of the transaction uh, showing the inputs on the left and the outputs on the right. You can also at the bottom of the send screen here optimize your transaction for privacy which is why you are seeing extra inputs and outputs here or you can optimize for efficiency which will use fewer inputs and outputs to make the transaction as cheap as possible and you can see that's reflected in the total fees here. After that, you would click Create Transaction. But before I move on to that next step, I'm just going to show you the more advanced way to construct the transaction. So I'm just going to clear all of this information. So let's say that you've got multiple transactions and multiple pieces of Bitcoin or UTXOs, unspent transaction outputs, in your wallet. To view those, you could click on the UTXO tab on the left-hand side, and they will be listed, listed here with their associated address. So let's say I wanted to spend from a specific UTXO for a single purpose. I can do that here. So I would just highlight the UTXO that I want to use for the transaction. And then I would press send selected. You can of course highlight multiple, but for the purposes of this transaction, I'm just gonna use a single one. And then we're back to the same send screen that I've just walked you through. So I'm just gonna quickly populate all of the information. I'm going to adjust that fee rate back down to one sat per byte. I want it optimized for efficiency and then I can press create transaction. Sparrow is then going to give us a final summary of the transaction for you to review, including the transaction ID, which wallet we want to sign from, which of course is our passport wallet. Once I'm happy with that, I can choose finalize transaction for signing so we now have our unsigned transaction that we need to share with Passport so that Passport can verify the transaction details and authorize the transaction so that it's valid and will be accepted by the Bitcoin network. So to pass that unsigned transaction across to Passport, I'm gonna to opt to use the QR version. So I'm gonna click show QR. And there we have Sparrow displaying an animated QR series that is the QR encoded version of our unsigned transaction that we need to scan with Passport's camera. So on Passport, I'm going to choose Sign with QR Code. And then I'm going to scan the QR code being displayed by Sparrow. Depending on the lighting conditions and the size of your transaction, sometimes Passport might have a more difficult time reading the amount of information that Sparrow is trying to display in those QR codes. So you can click on Increase and Decrease Density to change the density of the QR codes to make it easier for Passport to pick up that information. Once Passport has scanned the information, it's going to display the amount and the destination address. The change amount, if there is any in this transaction, which for our demonstration transaction in this video, there isn't. Then it's going to show the total network fee. And then finally, it will ask if you would like to sign the transaction. And then Passport is going to display its own animated QR series to be read by Sparrow Wallet. So the next step over on Sparrow is to click scan QR 
which will open our laptop's webcam. And I just need to offer up Passport in front of the camera so that Sparrow can read that signed transaction. And there we go, we do have the signature required to make this transaction valid. So the final step is to click Broadcast Transaction and Sparrow will then send that out to the Bitcoin network. So if we close this transaction tab and head back to the transaction screen, we can see that our test transaction is sitting at the top of the list in an unconfirmed state, waiting to be processed by the miners on the Bitcoin network. Finally, I'm going to quickly walk you through the SD card signing flow for those of you that prefer that method of signing with Passport. So I'm on the final transaction screen here. And what I'm going to do is click Save Transaction. I'm going to save that to the SD card that is inserted into my computer. Then I can remove the SD card and insert that into Passport. With the SD card inserted into the top of Passport, I'm going to choose sign with micro SD card. Then I'm going to choose the transaction that I've just saved from Sparrow. And Passport is then going to show us all of the transaction details again, which we can confirm and then sign. Passport will then save a signed version of the transaction to the micro SD card, which we can then take out of Passport and insert back into our computer. Over in Sparrow, then we can choose Load Transaction. Locate the signed.psbt file that is on our SD card. Double click it, and then we have the required signature. We now have a valid transaction, and all that's left is to choose Broadcast Transaction.